Welcome to the class. We're going to look at ways that you can access your library account from home. You can always call the library or come by for help, but this may be more convenient for you if you can do this yourself. We're going to look at two different things. One is our website and one is our app, and we're going to do the website first. And these are some of the things we'll be able to do. You can look at your current checkouts and your history. You can renew books and place holds. You can view your holds and your place in the line. You can create lists of items and you can check out an ebook and you can request new items. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to our website. So from this page, if you go to my account, um, I've already gone to it and logged in, but that's how you get to it. And it will come out on a page, probably something like this. You can change how this page looks a little bit. It comes out on your personal information. I'm going to go to checkouts. So the first thing to notice is that there are digital checkouts and the library checkouts. So this will be your print items or DVDs or CDs that you actually got here. Over here, it tells me that there is one digital checkout and two library checkouts. I also have a hold placed and I have no fines. So I'm going to click that to make the digital show up. So this shows me the title and the expiration date. If I want to, I can return the item here or I can download it here. And this is the checkout history. This shows the title, the date it was checked out, the day it was returned. This is a sample account. So most of these are checked out the same day they're brought back um, and pretty much all in the same day. These are all links, so you can go from that to the catalog account record. So if you can't remember something, you see that you checked it out, but you don't remember what it was, you can actually go back and see. Okay, so it took me back to the catalog. I'm going to go back to my account. And it locked me out. So these are the two print items I have checked out. I can click on those and get anything else see on this, how many there are when they're due back. And there is one hold that I placed and I need to take that off. So this tells me I am zero in the queue. And I believe that is because it's not actually here yet. Yeah, there's no copies available. It's still on order. But um, if it was here, I would be able to see how many people were in line before me. And the status is pending. That is because it isn't actually here yet. This is a new book that uh, we're still waiting for. You can cancel a hold. You can suspend a hold. Um, say you're going on vacation and you don't want your holds to come up while you're gone. You can suspend them and then you can cancel the suspension later. If you need help with anything like that, you can always come into the library, but it is useful to be able to see them. Um, there is a place for digital holds. I didn't put any on this account. And this has no fines, but you could check all that. We don't do overdue fines anymore, so the fines will be as much of an issue going forward. I'm going to go back to checkouts. You can renew some books here. You can click the one that you want and click that. I'm not going to do it because I just checked out two days ago. Um, it may sometimes tell you that it can't do it. That could be because someone else has a hold on it, or it could be that you have already renewed it. It will only let you do it once but you can call the library and see if we can renew it for you or you can bring it in. Let's see where I looked at the checkout history. Okay, I'm gonna go back over here, oh, this way. Okay, so we looked at that. Um, we haven't placed a hold, so we'll do that. So I'm going to search something Okay, 
Okay, so one thing that I wanted to show you is how to filter your searches, which is all this over here. This is a really good way to tell it that you only want to see an ebook or you only want to see the DVD, something like that. So I'm going to tell this that I just want the book and I'm going to click include. So this brings me to the one that we actually have here in the library of physical copy. And if I want to place a hold, I'll just click that. Um, it's already on pickup library. You don't have to change that and then click place holds and then OK. And I've got to tell them downstairs not to pull this. So that's how easy it is to actually place a hold. Another thing I want to show you, um, you may already be aware of this, but if you use the catalog and you just go by the top of the page, if you keep scrolling down, there's a lot of information down here. If something is part of the series, sometimes it will have the series where you can look up all the different titles. This one has lookalikes, story elements, ratings, Sometimes there will be a review that you can click on to read the entire review. So let's see. So we looked at the holds in our place in line. I'm going to look at the holds again since we've added one. So we can go back to my account. So now I've got two items on hold. This one um, is number one because I'm the first in line. Um, I said before that pending is because it's not in yet, but this one is in. So pending must mean that it hasn't been pulled yet. So I made a mistake there. Um, this will say that it's available when someone in the library has seen that it's on hold and we pull off the shelf and we hold it for you. Another really cool thing to do is you can make lists of items and this is something that you can't do on the app. It's one of the only things that you can't do. And I like the idea of making these lists. So we're going to look at that. And I've got some made up. You can make a list by clicking this little plus sign on this right here. And I don't know of any limit to how many lists you can make. I've made three just to get started. And I'm going to show you how to add things to the list in a minute. This is what it looks like when you have one done. So these are some mystery books I've put on, some new books that are coming out soon or have already been out. Um, it tells you the year that we got it or the year it was printed, the call number. Uh, you can see a little uh, picture of the cover. These are some actions. You can place holds here. You can email it to yourself and I'll show you what that looks like. You can print out as much of it as you want. I haven't tried out moving copies, so I'm not sure what those are. I'm guessing move puts on a different list. Oh. Yeah. Don't cancel that. I'm going to click on one so you can see what it looks like when you get in here. There's zero copies available. This is how I added it to my list. So when you do a search for something and you see a book that looks really good, but maybe it's not in or you already have too many things checked out, you can add it to a list from here. Something else. Okay, here's one that has a review and another one has um, a summary that you can read. So I'll show you that. So I'm going to go back. Um, to my historical fiction that I started. It's got six items. This one I put in two different formats. So if I decide I really want that, I can see if I want print or electronic, which is not available. We're going to click on this one because it is one that has a preview. Oh, there it is. Sorry, next excerpt. So if you click that, it pulls up some part of the book and it will depend on the publisher or the author or someone how much it is. 
Some of them are pretty long. So as you can see, this is quite a lot of text. You can check this out and see if you think this is something that you'd like to read and it goes all the way down. So I'm going to go out of that. And this is one that actually has the titles of the series. These aren't linked. Um, I've seen some that have the ones that we have linked. I'm sure we have all of these books. But if you wanted to read all of these, you can see them in uh, order here. And you could search these and you could make a list that is just the series. And then you could click on that and see which ones are in. So there's a lot to the catalog that I want everybody to know about. Um, let's see. I didn't show you, you can actually check out an ebook from this, which is how I checked out Persuasion a few days ago. So Overdrive doesn't have any available. I'm going to keep going down. This is an unlimited. Um, I checked this out the other day, so it works. And it is one that it will open it up as like a, almost a PDF. Keep going. Okay, so this is an e audiobook from Hoopla. And I'm gonna go ahead and check it out. Oh, okay, sorry. This um, this account isn't set up for Hoopla. I forgot about that. Okay, we'll check out this one. So it's gonna give you some options. If you have a Kindle app, you can check that. Um, Adobe Digital Editions is something that you may recognize if you have a Nook or a Kobe, I think that they use that. I'm going to see if it let me check it out as that. Okay, so it's actually, because I'm doing this on a desktop, it's going to let me open it here. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit cancel. And, okay, so now when I go back to my account, go to checkouts, go to digital checkouts. Now I've got two different versions of this book checked out. And I'm making myself a list that I need to return those later. Okay. All right. Um, this is what it looks like if you email yourself a catalog record. And I'll go back through that in a second. But it gives you the title, and that is a link back to the catalog record. Um, this one is checked out, so it's telling you when it's due back and gives you just a little information about the series. So I'm going to look up, that was a Perry Mason book, I'm just going to look him up. Okay, so this is from the TV show, I'm going to click on that, and it's up here in Selected Action. I could add this to a list if I wanted to, um, I'm going to email it. And I've already got my work email address in there and then send email. So now I'll have another email address from this. So this could be useful if you see something that you think one of your friends or would like, or maybe you are doing a work project at school and you want to send it to the other people on your team. Lots of different things you could do with that. When you go to select an app, uh, sorry, an action and you want to add to my list, it will give you the ones you've already got and you can put it on a temporary list and create a new list later. So if you say wanted to do like a legal fiction list, you could put this on a temporary list and then make a legal list later. And again, you make a new list by clicking there. Okay, I want to show you before we go on how to request an item. Sometimes you look something up and it won't be there. So I'm going to go back to our home page and right here on this catalog thing, there is suggest a purchase or interlibrary loan. And you would fill this out. If you don't have your library card, you can call the library. It is uh, required. You put in your name, you choose the material type. Um, department is just if it's youth or adult. If you're not sure, just make a guess. Um, these author and ISBN additional, they aren't required. So if you're not sure who the author is, you probably don't know the ISBN. That doesn't matter. Additional information is just if there's something you think we need to know. 
And then if it's something that we don't feel like we need to order for the collection or maybe we can't find one, we may be able to borrow it from another library and that's interlibrary loan. Um, if you borrow it from interlibrary loan and then you never come and pick it up, there is a $5 fee. Um, and you have eight days to choose to, sorry, to pick it up. So if you want to, you can say, yes, if you don't buy it, I would like to borrow it, or you can say no. And then if you want to receive status updates, you can say that you do or you don't, and you'll have to have an email address if you want the status update, because then when we order it, it's going to tell you that we ordered it, so you'll know that it's on its way. And then when it comes in, we put a hold on it for you and you get to check it out first. And that again is from the homepage of our website, right under search the library. All right, um, a few things about the lists. Um, one thing that could be a little bit frustrating is you can only put in things that are already in our catalog. So we usually order books like two to three weeks, sorry, two or three months before they come out. There are some exceptions. If we know there are going to be a lot of holds, we might get something earlier. So if you see something that looks really good that's coming out next year, we probably haven't ordered it. But it can be good that it's only things that are currently in our catalog because you won't have a long list of things that you can't actually check out here. It will be things that are coming pretty soon. You can put a hold on it. You can make uh, multiple lists and you can mix up the formats on the list. Some ideas of things you could do is you could make a Christmas list of the uh, music, uh, books, movies that you've checked out here that you like for Christmas or of course any other season or holiday. If you have kids, you can make a list for each child and put their favorites on it, books or movies or anything. And then if you have a sick day or a road trip coming up, you've got a list ready when you just go and see what's um, available. You could do a series, um, which we already talked about. And that's especially useful if there's a series with multiple authors. Um, sometimes an author passes away and new authors come up and pick up their books. Uh, it can be kind of frustrating for trying to follow a character and you can't just go to one author. So you could make a list for that. And you could do a reading challenge list, like a Rory Gilmore reading challenge. Um, I tried to do the Rory Gilmore reading challenge once. It was really frustrating. I was, I think I had a spreadsheet um, with every title and which format I could get, if I could get it. Uh, if I'd had this system where I could make a list, it would have been a lot easier. So that is everything on accessing your account on our website. And we're going to look at some screenshots of the app. This is what it looks like in the App Store. It's called My McLib, and I found it by just searching MCLIB. And this is what it looks like when you click on it. Um, you can click there if you want to download it. Um, whenever you're looking for apps, you can usually look at a few screenshots and maybe some reviews. This is what it looks like when you download it and you sign in. And to sign in, you will need your library card number and you'll have a PIN or a password. If you don't know that, you can come or call the library. So on the left, that is the first screen that you'll see. And if you click on my account, you'll see the second screen where the, the top one sort of moves over to the left and a sidebar appears. And that has checkouts, holds, find how many devices it's on, um, if you have a library account that you're sharing with someone, you might have this app on like four different devices and you can keep track of it. And you can sign out, which I never do, but you could. Once in a blue moon, I will try to use it and has signed me out. That doesn't happen very often. You will sometimes have to uh, sign yourself back in. This is a few of the things that you can do on the app. You can get to that suggest to purchase page. There is an events page. If you click on that, it will give you the upcoming events. Um, the top one is the one that we're in right now, access your library account. And you can scan a USB number to see if we have it in the library. So if you had this um, 
on your phone or your tablet and you were in a bookstore and you were divided about whether or not to buy a book, you could scan the UPC code on the back and it would tell you if we have it. Um, it says that it works on the library labels, but I tried that and it didn't. Um, it just did the ISBN number. That's what it was set for. So I didn't play with that very much, but it's something you want to play with. When you use the catalog in app, and the catalog means um, looking up titles basically, um, apparently I suggested the volume when I did this. I searched the word autumn, and these are the search results. And you can filter on this just like we did when we told it that we only wanted a book or only wanted a movie. The default is any format. If you click on that, it will let you choose if you want an electronic or print item. So you can cut out a lot of things right off the bat. If you only want an audio, but you don't care if it's CD or digital, you can check both of those formats. So that makes it really easy. If you are, say, getting a lot of ebooks and e music and that's not what you want, you can just tell it what you want. This is what it looks like when you click on um, a catalog record. So I clicked on a book called Autumn. You can see how many books are available. You can place a hold there. And there is a way in the app to see your holds and it's right under checkouts in that my account menu from the first screen. So this tells me there's one copy available. I can plus place that hold and it will be pulled for me. This is what it looks like when you look at your checkouts and renewals. This is actually um, a second screen. The first screen, instead of saying renew selected and cancel, it says select and renew all. So I clicked, um, I clicked, what did I do, sorry. I clicked select, so it's going to let me choose which ones I want to renew. Now you'll notice that they don't all have this box on the side to choose. These are things that I have already renewed, so I can't do it again from the app. Um, again, it could be that something has a hold on it. That means someone else has let the library know they want it, and we can't renew those either. So if you get this, you can call the library or come in, and we may be able to put a hold on it for you. So it doesn't necessarily mean you definitely can't, but you can't do it from the app if you don't have this box. So that's how easy it is to place a hold. You just click that box, a check mark would show up and you would renew selected. And if you go to the checkouts and you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page down here where it's cut off, there is a checkout history. So you can see your whole history. Um, one note about checkout history is it is possible to opt out of having your history saved. So if you go to checkout history and it's blank, then you can come into the library or call us and tell us that you want to start saving your checkout history. It may be that when you were signing up for your library card, you didn't know what it mean or you didn't want your checkout history at the time. So you opted out and we can fix that and it won't show you. I don't think it will show you your back history, but it will start saving your history from that time on. Okay, that is a lot of information, but it's not any of it really very hard. And you can always come into the library if you're having trouble with it, we can show you again. And this is how you can contact me. You've got my email address there and my phone number and my phone extension. And we thank you for watching and we'll have some more classes coming up. We'll put them on our website on the calendar and we always put them on Facebook.